me on Instagram because I'm going to be releasing clothing soon. Almost like store merch. And this is one of the pieces. It's a rotten hat based off an old vintage baseball cap. Uh, I kind of flipped it and turned it into a collegiate themed hat. So like more fraternity style. I don't know. I'm trying to make fraternity stylish. I have no idea why. But just follow me on there to see what I'm up to in terms of creative space and, you know, what I've been uh formulating and innovating so yeah rotten closet at rotten closet at ryan is rotten and here's some fits so hopefully the audio is okay for this video i am shooting it on my new iphone right now and kind of comparing it to my dslr i recently went to la uh on a trip with a bunch of friends of mine and we went shopping and did a bunch of different stuff so i'm gonna be kind of doing like i'll probably upload a vlog style video but right now this is gonna be my pickups from the Rose Bowl. It was the very first time I've ever been. Um, for some reason, every single time I go to LA, it always lands on like the first Sunday of the month. So that means I had the opportunity to go to Rose Bowl before, but I always thought it was just gonna be like a really overpriced flea market. I saw a lot of amazing things, really cool vendors. The one that stuck out to me the most was a vendor that had tables and tables chopped full of dead stock vintage garments. And I did pick up quite a bit from that station um, and I'm gonna be kind of going through everything. Uh, it was really overwhelming, just in, over, in an overall sense, the Rose Bowl is extremely overwhelming. If you don't like crowds of people, then I wouldn't go. It's just really anxiety inducing. And on top of that, I was trying to meet a friend I have never met there before and I got lost and had to find my group and back and forth and whatnot and it was hot. So if you're not into that kind of thing, if you don't like Disneyland, don't go to Rose Bowl because it's just as bad, if not worse, in my opinion. In terms of the shopping, everything was priced fairly. You had different booths, literally miles and miles of vintage clothing vendors. And it's not like an antique fair where it's just, you know, mishmash, like here's a clothing and then like 10 stalls down is another clothing booth. It's all clothing. Like there's too much to look for. I probably didn't even get through a third of the, of the flea market and I still found a bunch of stuff. There were booths that were doing $5 dig piles. There were booths that were doing dead stock vintage, some booths with like vintage Americana, very curated things, others with just teas. So you had a very large diversity of the product that Rose Bowl had to offer. Um, I hit a little bit of everything. I'm mainly Americana based and military based. So those are the products that I tended to buy. Um, but without further ado, I'm just gonna get into it. So this is from the $5 dig piles, uh, one of the booths we found. This is a vintage Kunkel, like I think 1980s or maybe even 70s, like college shirt. Very, very into collegiate things right now. I think it's a very, it's like trending, but there are things that are timeless that fall into that collegiate theme. And this is probably one of them. It reminds me a lot of like Telfar shirts and that's really why I bought it. Uh, I really like what Telfar's doing right now with their collegiate stuff, kind of gap looking. Um, it's very, I don't know, like 90s kid and earlier. Uh, that 70s show vibe sometimes with the ringer tees. But this is on a Champion Extra Large. Full blue green sleeve and cracking screen print really adds to the character of the shirt. I don't like that the Kunkel is like a different green though. I don't know if you noticed, like this is a teal and then this is like a straight up green, like a flat green. But the fit's really nice. Um, you'll see in the B-roll, it's, it's very fitted on me. Well. There's some looseness to it, but I just really like the material and the overall look of the shirt. So really happy with that. This next one is a vintage Levi's zip jacket. It's kind of like a shirt jacket because it's it's missing that thickness that most Levi jackets have. Like this is a Levi's jacket that's like super thick. This is almost like a button up or a pullover. Um, still really nice. This was $15, which is really cheap. I think in my town, it'd probably be like $20 or $30 at your local antique fair or vintage fair. Um, it's, I think, 90s. I think that's a 90s Levi's tag. I'm not the biggest Levi's expert, but the overall cut of it's really nice. I honestly bought it because of the price, which is something you should never do because it, it leads to having pieces in your wardrobe that you don't wear. Or after, you know, trying it on a couple times and wearing it around the Rose Bowl, I noticed that the cut of it is very nice. Like it's just slightly below my waist and the sleeves are perfect length. So I probably will be implementing this in my everyday wear at some point um, because I do have to dress up for work and this is like a nice layering piece. So yeah, really cool. Levi's vintage. 
This one was something I wouldn't, if, you know, looking back on it now, I wouldn't have expected myself to buy this, but this is a vintage guest button up. I think I might take the guest branding off the front just because I think it takes away from the overall design of the shirt, but it's a size three, which makes me think it's a woman's piece, but if it's an extra large man, I don't know. Um, guest size three, made in the USA, vintage guest tag. And it has this beautiful like white linen. Let me see what the composition of this is. Oh, it's cotton. So it's a white cotton button up with beautiful aging. Um, it's like an off white because of the age. And then it has throughout the entire shirt, this like indigo dyed thread, uh, shashiko stitching. So Guess and George Marciano definitely took after like Japanese wear with this button up. It's very loose, very comfortable. It reminds me of like something you would wear to the beach. Uh, very loose and flowy. So I'm really happy with that button up. This is another piece from the $5 dig pile. Uh, I have no idea what this band is. Honestly, I just really like the graphic. Um, I love paneling and it looks like, I don't know, just the color to really pop off this tee. Lately, I've been noticing that I have too many white t-shirts. So I do need to invest in some like washed out black ones or maybe even make some. Uh, the back of it says bro to in summer. Whatever that means, I have no idea. Single stitch, fits like a large, so it is a little bit more fitted on me, but I don't mind, because I don't know. I can't have baggy stuff all the time. Here's another piece. This is a really tattered up vintage cardigan from the, I think, 50s or 60s. It's by Time Knit, or Fine Knit. It's by Fine Knit Sportswear. It's 100% virgin wool, size XL. And it has these beautiful, like, buttercream stripes down the front of the cardigan. As you can see, it's very messed up. It's There's holes all over this piece. And honestly, I don't mind. The cardigan really speaks for itself with those stripes. It really takes away from the distressing. Um, I love the sleeves and I love how baggy they are before the cuff because it leads to like this bunching, bundling effect. Um, the sizing is true to size, I would say. It fits really well. Um, and I have a lot of brown. I have a lot of cardigans in general, but I didn't really have this colored brown. And I love like cardigans with stripe detailing on them, uh, like tasteful stripes. It reminds me a lot of something like Tyler the Creator would wear, um, or even just in general, like thinking of like 70s wear, very, very, very into this cardigan. This is absolutely my favorite shirt I picked up. I am very against wearing military things or things that have names or branding on it that I'm not associated with or familiar with. However, this shirt, well, for one, it's faded, so you can barely read, you know, what it says on the front, especially if I move around, because the color of the print kind of matches well with the color of the shirt. But the color of the shirt, it's like a purple, gray, red in certain lighting. It's so beautiful, and the freaking material is so soft and paper thin. It's a single stitch army uh, t-shirt. I don't know what era it's from, probably the 90s or something, but it is paper thin. It is so, like, you can see through it. Like, you can literally see through it. So I don't know, I love this shirt. It's so loose and perfect and I really wanna make something like this. And it looks really cool layered up with other like reddish clay colors, like earth tones. So really cool piece. This was $5, so. These last five pieces are from that military dead stock booth. They had so many items and probably the best prices of all the booths that I went to in Rose Bowl. Some of these pieces, I know are vintage, but I don't know what era they're from. And some of them I know are like a little bit newer. For example, this beanie, this fisherman, like military beanie is new. It came with tags and they looked like they were from like the nineties or something. So I, I don't expect these to be super old. I just really wanted a beanie that fits like this, like chunky, heavy ribbing. This is a little bit out there. This is like a weird, um, like beautiful seafoam green, like linen blend button up shirt, or not button up, I guess it would be tied, like knotted shirt in the front. Looks very villager-esque, but I just really like how the sleeves fit. It's like slimming and then it kind of bells out a little bit at the, at the tip of the sleeve. Um, I like this and I like how when these hang, they kind of look like a bolo tie. I don't know why I've been liking like bolo tie looks lately, but I would never wear one because it's very Western. And I don't like dressing Western, I guess. But the colors, I think something that this booth really nailed was the colors. So a lot of times you'll see pieces that they had that were 
either bleached and then dyed or dyed from like the original piece. And then some were just kept in their original colors. Um, this was $20. This one's a very interesting piece and I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna wear it yet, but it's a denim, I think fully denim, like overcoat kimono type deal. It's from the 40s and that's what the vendor told me. Um, he had a lot of knowledge about, you know, what era things uh, came from and What's really cool about this is that there's selvage on the inside. As you can see, like you may not be able to see, but there's a really thin red line as they call it. Um, so what makes that unique is that when people make selvage items, they're using the very edge of the fabric. So it is more costly to do. You're, you're cutting to have an, an exact portion of the fabric yardage on the ends of your piece on the seams. Um, really interesting shirt. He had a bunch that were tied uh, dyed purple, but this was the only one that was kept in its original color. Um, they have these thin strings that you're supposed to tie up front in order to secure the jacket closed. But yeah, really cool, really long. I might shorten it, but I don't really want to tamper with it, to be honest. So I'll try and figure out a way to wear it normally. This is a German chore coat. And the reason I know it's German is because it actually has a tag on the inside. I believe this is from the 60s, but don't quote me. It says Worcester Metzingen. Metzingen? I don't, know how to, I don't know how to spell that. And I think it's from 69, but I'm not sure. So don't quote me. It has a really nice reinforcement on the armholes. Uh, and something really interesting, I don't know if I like it or hate it, is these pink buttons to secure the jacket. I think it's a very interesting touch, especially on something so dark and rustic looking. But yeah, I've been really into chore coats. I really want to purchase like a moleskin French one, but it's kind of getting warmer now. So I'll probably hold off on outerwear, but this is definitely one of my favorite pieces I picked up. So this is like a beige version. Um, it's a label 48. So I think that's like a 34, 32. Um, elastic on the waistband on the back, cargo pocket. And this is definitely bleached because you can smell the bleach, but I just love how it looks. It looks like a dirty white pair of like a dirty slate gray pair of pants. Um, they fit really short on me, so I'd, I'd probably only wear these with boots. Um, but yeah, button at the bottom so you can secure it tighter or looser. And then since it was bleached, all the black gray threading that was used to, to sew this pant together is showing as black. So I really like that, it's contrast stitch essentially. But yeah, beautiful wash, really love that and it's like, I don't know, it just really adds to the aged look. This is another piece that I had, same, similar effect. I think they bleached this and then dyed it like gray or green because it has this really subtle like pistachio color. I really love that color right now. And then this is what made me think it was like just dirty is this like black stain, but I think it was black before and the black from the original colors is showing. Really soft fabric. This one fits me a little bit better and it fits all the way down to my ankles. So it fits true to length. But yeah, that was really fun. Um, I really like these pants a lot. So like I said, like that kind of just establishes all the colors that there were at that booth. Really, really solid color schemes. And um, that's something I really like want to start emphasizing when I wear things is color and palettes and complementary colors. And then lastly, I did pick up some rings. Um, I got a regular band for my middle finger. I just really needed some rings desperately. Um, I got this silver and all of these are stamped as real silver 925. So here in Sacramento, they'd probably be like $30 at the antique fair, but I got all my rings for $50 for all three of them. So this is a Jade silver stamped ring. Oops. A Jade silver stamped ring is what I got right here. 925 silver and then beautiful green Jade. I don't know if it's real Jade. The guy said it was, but I've owned Jade before and I don't think I've seen one this flat colored. But either way, it just really sticks out really well. It's a nice pinky ring for me. Um, and then I got this like really uh, Cartier looking ass ring. I think it is vintage though. So I mean, who's to say, but it has vertical stamps on it instead of like vertical screw stamps on it instead of the horizontal. So it's not really Cartier, but it looks like Cartier and it just looks cool. I just like minimal designs for rings. Um, I would say all three of these are really plain. So I was really happy to get some rings that actually fit my fingers because my fingers are fat as hell. 
But anyways, I hope you guys liked my Rose Bowl pickups. I will probably be uploading a lot more videos soon. Uh, it's 2020. It's time for me to get into gear and actually commit to uploading things. You can follow me on Instagram at Ryan is Rotten. Yeah, my Instagram has changed. And I also have a Instagram store now, uh, more of like a curated styling photo shoot type page that I upload like my own art on. But that's called Rotten Closet if you guys wanna go check it out. If you guys wanna ask about if anything is for sale of mine, definitely message me on there because that's where I sell all my stuff. And thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later, bye.